everybody, it's Missy. Long time no see. Making a new series for tutorials in Krita. Uh, they just released their new build 3.1.1, which is the build that I'll be using for this new series. And the 3.1.1 build also fixed a lot of bugs that, that the um, initial release had, which is also good because I didn't want you guys to feel overwhelmed that with all these bugs and stuff or that the program wasn't worth trying out because it had so many bugs. It is definitely worth trying out. So without further delay, let's start with the interface of Krita. So when you first open Krita, this is the default look you're going to get, the workspace. On the top here you have your menu options. You have some other uh, brush settings and uh, options here as well. The left here is your toolbar. You have every single tool available to you. On the right, you're going to have um, some dockers. That's what they call these uh, little guys here. Your little panel. Put you back. You have uh, six dockers, I think, that are default. And the bottom one, it's layers, brush presets, and tool options. Above that are your color options. So your advanced color selector, your specific color, the hues, and all that fun stuff and other color sliders which you can add here later. Um, this will actually work better when I have a new document to use it with. So we're going to make a new document. Go to File, New, and this is the new window that's going to pop up. On the left here you have your document options. You have this awesome new feature that they added which is animation. I don't animate very often, so those who are familiar with animation you're going to know exactly what to do. However, I will get myself familiar with it and try and do a simple tutorial on a basic ball bounce. You have your comic templates. The nice thing about these is when you open it up, it's going to have a bunch of layers um, for your boxes. It's going to mask things off, which is really, really nice. I'm going to quickly close out of that. Back to file new. Design templates. Cinema uh, layouts, um, the web design stuff, I don't use these as much either. Um, however, if you are going to be doing film things, you want like your own title sequence or some image to fit in the beginning of your film or at some point in the film, this might be a good reference for you. I just need that. I'm breaking my program, I'm sorry. Alright, your DSLR templates, texture templates, if you're doing repeat backgrounds or mostly 3D textures, 1K, 2K, 4K, cool stuff. Create from clipboard if you are, um, let's say you're just browsing the web or you're trying to help somebody with their own art and you want to quickly do an overlay instead of going to the image, right clicking, save as, um, you can go to the window, you can hit your print screen button on your keyboard. That's for PC. I can't remember what it is for Mac, so I apologize. Go back to Krita, and you can see that under the image size, it will automatically have the width and the height there. And mine is a 920 by 1080 screen, so that's what it's going to save it as. And then the clipboard, you kind of have like a small preview of what you just screen capped. And hit create. I can do the colors as they appear on my on the website or on my monitor. I'm just going to do as on web. And voila! Everything I viewed on my computer for the web page is here. Exactly as I screen capped it. So yeah. I can draw on it if I want. Like, hey. Oh here, <laughs> you know. Alright, so I don't want to save that. And now we're gonna go back to file new and custom document. So under predefined, there's a bunch of European sizes, texture sizes, and US sizes. The bottom four are custom ones I have made. I usually use my standard landscape. Uh, the width is 3600 and the height is 2400 pixels. And my resolution is always at 300 dpi. If you want to make a new one of your own, let's say you usually do like a 1920, we'll just say, let's call it desktop image. And we'll just say you're going to be making a bunch of desktop images. So, 1920 by 1080 is going to be your size of that image. I'm going to save it as desktop template. And before you, you save it right now, so then when you go to predefined, it's right there on the bottom. Cool. And you can also change the landscape or portrait. 
Now if you go to the content tab, you have this really cool feature. You can choose how many layers you want to start your new document with. Uh, I've always started with at least four. And the image background color, I usually do like a medium gray. And that's just for color purposes when I go to color my stuff. And it's just easier on my eyes. And you can have that color transparent if you want. So if you want the gray but you don't want it to show up 100%, change the opacity. So if you do like 50, you'll um, see the checkerboard behind. There you go, the checkerboard behind the uh, color. So we can still not be blinded by a bright white and have that nice soft gray to it or not. But I don't use that, so we're going to change that. And these settings are not saved to your predefined image sizes. You will have to change this every time if you need a different um, setup for different documents that you create. And then the last thing for the content tab, first layer means that if I have four layers, layer one is going to be that color. So I can hide it or, or turn it off or whatever and it'll disappear to just reveal a checkerboard background or turn it back on and it will stay there. I don't like that. I like it to be the canvas color. That way I don't waste my four layers. That's just a personal preference. So if I do as canvas color, I'm going to zoom out so you can see it. All my layers are empty. They're fully transparent. I can draw on each one without affecting that background color. So now that we've created our first document, I'm going to go over a few other um, tips and stuff for starting your first uh, document in Krita. Uh, if you right click anywhere on the workspace or your canvas, doo -doo -doo -doo, this little wheel pops up. You can put your own uh, oops, uh, brush sections in here, which we'll talk about in another video that goes over brushes. This is just kind of like your quick selection tool. Um, they call it the palette pop-up palette. So I like this pen here, so I'm just going to use it for the whole video. Um, you have your erasers, your markers, I think this is watercolor, eraser there. Uh, what is this? This is just another paintbrush. Alright, so got all of your scribbles here. I'm on layer 4. Cool, you turn on, turn off with the little eye, the little eye icon. <laughs> Uh, under br brush presets, you have all the default brushes here. The blank boxes are the funny looking ones or custom ones I have made. People who actually make brushes to share have beautiful icons with them. I don't, because I don't plan on sharing them at the moment. They're just for one time use, usually for certain images I'm working on. Uh, but you can scroll through, try out all these cool effects, all these, they're just really nicely made. Tool options. Um, so you can do like a stabilizer and you'll see it'll have a nice weight to it so you have beautiful lines. I don't, some people like that, some people don't, I just do basic smoothing. Now if you're changing your tool, um, like your crop layer, you have all these different tool options there. We'll go over those more in depth later on, but go ahead and explore it, maybe you already know what you're doing. If you're used to Photoshop and whatnot, you have a general idea of what to um, change some of those options to, to suit your needs, but everything's going to pop up there. Your color, now you can select it, so I'm going to just, I like purple, so I'm going to do purple. Oh, sorry. Yay! So now I can go through and change the color. Go here and change the saturation, lightness, all this cool stuff. Ooh, that came out nice for screwing around. Alright, so we're done with this side. Now we're going to go back to the menu options here. You got your file, save as, all that fun stuff, your edit. Basically the same menu options you usually have in most programs. There are a few things that are different. Um, the dockers, you can hide them, you can sh make them show up again. Um, the ones with the check marks are what's showing right now. If I don't want my two options there, I can click it and it is gone. If I accidentally get rid of it and I want to bring it back, back to settings, dockers, and tool options, and the tab will appear again. So if you accidentally close out of something, just go back to your dockers under the settings um, menu and you can just turn it back on. 
Uh, I don't use these themes. I like the dark. If you want to try something different, feel free. Ooh, that's dark. Maybe I'll keep it to that. I like this. We're keeping it on this one now. Cool. Alright, so filters. You have some of your filters here. I don't use these very often. Let's see. Under image, if you go to image properties. You can change your background color while you're working on your document without creating a whole new document altogether. Clearly they have a ton of crazy colors. You can make your own. I, I'm not going to really change it right now, but if you want to make it some like beautiful pastel blue or like some weird, like, I don't know, I guess we make it a cute green. I don't know. Let's do a zombie green. That's cool. You can say okay. Oh my god, that's really bright. So, I don't like that, but it's a cool color on its own. So, if you have that color in the canvas and you like it, but you're ready to export it as a PNG or a transparent file, turn this little section all the way down to zero, and that color is gone. Or it's transparent. So when you save it out, it's not going to show up. I like to use that. It's fun. I love it. Alright, and then another quick tip. Um, under your layer options, you can import and export into a new layer. Um, you can transform that layer. You can mirror it horizontally and vertically. Just that layer, which is really nice. You don't have to like select just that section in the layer and then rotate it and all that crazy stuff. So I'm in layer four. Perfect. So now I can go. Let's do like a stupid red. So I can go back to layer four. Transform. I can keep mirroring it without affecting other layers. It's a cool thing to know. Your select menu. I have the things selected right now. You can invert the selection. Uh, tools. I haven't used the recording on the macros yet. Um, window. Just if you want a new window, you can close this window. And then help. And then about Krita. 3.1.1. Cool. And then you have this part up here. I'm going to get back to this later. Uh, these are your gradients. If you want to mess with those patterns, switch the colors. These are your brush uh, options. You can change, make your own custom brushes here. Again, I'll go over that in a different video. Uh, these are the brushes again that you can use. You can change the um, mode of your brush. So you want to hit darken. It's supposed to dark. Oh, I'm on a different layer. There. Is it darkening? Yeah, it's darkening. It's got an interesting effect to it. Nothing too great. No, I'm not really using the right brushes. I'm not really taking the time to do it right. So, yeah. Uh, your eraser, so if you don't want to default to like the pop up palette and hit eraser, you just hit it up here. It's also a good visual if you're switching between the two modes and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm in eraser mode or not. Your transparency, you can lock it, unlock it. Opacity, the translucency of it, the size of your brush. Nice thing is, creative brushes aren't like, they're okay with larger sizes. Some programs freak out the larger you get. I mean, obviously, you don't want to get too big because maybe your computer can't handle it. But for the most part, it's pretty it, it, responsive. It's not laggy, it's not slow. I'm on size for. Okay, there we go. There's a little bit of lag. The bigger you get, but that's okay. It's not terrible. All right, we're gonna go back to let's uh, do like a. All right, and then these are your mirror options. Woohoo! So I can have everything mirrored when I draw it. I can do it both ways. Let's do white. Make some cool wacky designs. Whoa! Turn that off. I'm going to turn these layers off because they're distracting. Yeah, so that's some of the basic rundown of all those options there. So let's say I made this beautiful image. Clearly it's a masterpiece. I want to save it. So under File, Save As, I'll save this. Like, masterpiece. Cool. But then, next day I'm like, wait, this isn't done. It needs some more pizzazz. So I go in here. 
make some changes. Beautiful. I'm going to make a big smiley face that you can't see there. But I don't want to get rid of my other version that I made in case I like to have those options. And it's also not a good idea to save over the same file name over and over because if something gets corrupted, which you do not want, um, you are basically screwed and that file is gone forever. So you want to do an incremental save, like version 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Krita is amazing and has a save incremental version in there. Just click on it. Sweet! So now you can see in your window the title of your document, masterpiece underscore zero zero one. Holy cow. All you have to do is keep hitting that button. Save an incremental version or control shift S, I think it was. Control Alt S, I'm sorry. I just hit file, save an incremental version. I don't trust myself enough to hit the right keys in the right order. So yeah. That's pretty cool. That's my favorite thing about Krita. It's just so awesome. And then you can also export as PDF if you want, export as other options here. Uh, if you want to see that it was a JPEG for posting or a PNG, this is what you do. You go to File Export. Uh, let's see. Where are you? There you are. Oh my gosh, I'm going to save it. Oh, I should name it Masterpiece for Posting. Uh, I always keep the compression at 100%. I don't want to lose anything for it for JPEGs. <laughs> yeah, it's saved out. Cool. Now you can do open recent. So I recently did a file save, which is a blank canvas. Nothing's on there. And, uh, yeah. So save as. You also got to save as for your JPEG thing, but either way works. And that's it for your introduction to Krita. And if you have a preference of what you'd like me to cover next in the next video, uh, definitely post it in the comments below. So yeah. Alright, thank you for watching. I hope this helped. I hope this was quick and clear and not too long. And yeah, subscribe for some more videos. They should hopefully be coming out later this month. I'm going to try and do at least one every two weeks. Yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you next time.